here we are at Sundance, but you've had a, you were uh, in a panel at Slam Dance, yes. which is one of the many things that Sundance has spawned, lap dance and all these other things. <laughs> uh, which is which is lap dance is great. As a festival. Anyway. Yeah, oh, of course, okay. yes. Oh, I see. But now, Vision Machine graphic novel. Tell us a little bit about not only this, but how you even got into this in general. Yeah, well, I, um, I'm a filmmaker. I was actually here uh, many, well, many moons ago, eight years ago, at the Slam Dance Film Festival with a movie called Robot Stories. Okay. Since then, I've been writing comic books. Uh, I write The Incredible Hulk for Marvel. Um, I'm also writing the Silver Surfer miniseries that's nice. coming out very soon. Yes. Um, and uh, the Ford Foundation had, Orlando Bagwell, the Ford Foundation, had this inspiration for a comic book that would imagine the world 50 years from now with kind of a special emphasis on the technological, social, um, political changes that will affect media makers. Um, so this is a big, crazy sci-fi story. The longer we worked on it, the more we realized that it's not just for media makers, it's for everybody. Because anybody who has a smartphone, a YouTube account, is uh, is now creating media. And sure. so the story tells the story of uh, three young... <clears throat> Uh, three young people who are um, uh, affected when Sprout Computers releases the their giant, uh, amazing new product for 2061 called the II. And the II is a pair of glasses. You put them on, and uh, you can whatever you look at, you can instantly record, edit. Uh, uh, put special effects in just by thinking about it, and instantly upload it to the uh, to to the to the net and share it with They're the world. They're coming out with this next year. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm very glad we came out with the book right now because <laughs> it's right. all going to happen. Um, but uh, so it, it it it's the amazing revolution that allows for incredible um, artistic uh, and excitement. Um, uh, and then the other shoe drops, of course, because there's uh, when you have that kind of instant communication, that instant ability to record anything um, and share it so fast, uh, there's enormous opportunities for surveillance, privacy, sure. security issues, uh, those kinds of things to pop up. So um, it's an amazing, you know, kind of, or a, a crazy story uh, full of utopia and dystopia and, <laughs> The, the, uh, the best thing about it, ladies and gentlemen, is that it's free. And if you, uh, we're giving out uh, copies of the book for free right now. We're going to be doing the same thing at other film festivals and comic book conventions at different points. Um, but uh, if you go to visionmachine.net, um, uh, you can download the whole book for free in PDF form. Um, <clears throat> we're releasing it under a Creative Commons license. Which is a special thing. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's another um, a, a group called Creative Commons has put together these uh, licenses that that uh, different creators have been using. Um, basically, what it means with the license that we chose is that you are free to download this book to share it with anybody you want. You could print it out, give it away. You can um, you can remix it. You could uh, you could you could use the art in your own projects. Mm -hmm. You can you can uh, you can tell spin-off stories um, all, as long as it's done non-commercially and you credit. Um, so it's uh, we're kind of putting our money where our mouth is because the book deals with questions of copyright and trademark in in, in this crazy sci-fi way, and we figured why not, uh, why not put yeah exactly. So uh, we chatted with Morgan Spurlock earlier oh, yeah. from of course Super Size Me. Uh -huh. He's a movie at now I believe it's called the greatest movie ever sold about product placement, and of course product placement is all through his movie, so mm -hmm. it makes total sense that <laughs> with something like this it, it actually becomes part of the media. <laughs> yeah, this, I mean this. All the all the different uh, images in here could oh a week from now be, be <laughs> someone's Facebook icon. And exactly. Be someone's and it becomes part of what it's actually. Exactly. Describing. Just uh, yeah, it's just run and go wild. I mean, it's it's um, you know if you're a do if you're a documentary filmmaker in particular, you um you know you, folks tear their hair out every day trying to get uh, permissions to use yeah. certain images and clips and stuff like that. And um, and I I mean I am I. I believe in copyright. I believe in trademark. My career depends upon it. You know, what I mean, I write, I write, I write these Marvel characters, and mm -hmm. and uh, and I, I'm very glad that the company is protective of those copyrights and trademarks. At the same time, um, I think that there's uh, there's th it's an exciting thing to have um, that the, the the kind of sharing that uh, that creators can do that allows for. Um, Creativity and new things to come out is is vital to mm -hmm. 
culture in general. And so this is um, this is kind of a grand experiment. It's a stab at, at opening it up a little bit. There are a lot of very exciting people who have been doing this in all kinds of fields. There's a musician named Jonathan Colton, for example, who's um, uh, who, uh, who who released a ton of his songs under Creative Commons licenses. Right. And as a result, there are um, people who have, you know, there are tons of people who have just sat down and made music videos for those songs just for kicks. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and it, it becomes a great incubator, a great, you know, way for folks to, uh, to uh, to to learn and 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 have fun and for culture to thrive. So, <laughs> hopefully, uh, you know, have fun. Check out Vision Machine. And it, it, even if you're not interested in any of this uh, this flibberty gibberter about the uh, Creative Commons and all that, it's a fun sci-fi story, and you're gonna like it. So check you, it out. You know what though? I think even for people who, who think they're not interested in it. This kind of thing is going to touch them, I think, whether they like it or not. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a, there's another. I mean, and then there's a whole another aspect to it, which is these questions of uh, of privacy and surveillance. Um, and uh, it's all. I mean, if nothing else, this is a big cautionary tale about mm -hmm. being sure to check your user agreement forms, uh, <laughs> which none of us do. I don't do it. I, I, I just like, I just downloaded some software the other day and I did exactly. But, I um, agree. Whatever. <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah, there's. I mean, with the, with the amount of information that uh, that all, that all of the things that we use every day, all of this social media, all the technology we use every day, there's massive amounts of information that's that's being stored somewhere, you know. And um, yes, we are protected by uh, to a certain extent by you know the the goodwill of the companies and also by certain laws which prevent. Uh, some of that from ha from being used in malicious ways, mm -hmm. but but there's there's massive op things move very quickly, and there's massive opportunity for both malicious and it's mistaken just, yeah, release of information. of information. Yes, right? exactly. So there's you know mistakes mistakes can and will be made, and and th this provides you with some terrifying ways in which uh, in which <laughs> they will say, they could happen. So. Now. so is the future bright? <clears throat> Or I'm sorry. The future. Well, you know, the future is kind of terrifying, but also surprisingly bright. So, uh, uh, yes, terrifying. exactly. That's why it's it's kind of a utopic dystopia or a dystopic utopia, depending on how you want to look at it. There's um, the the book does provide some uh, some some bright sh sunshiny moments here and there. So uh, I. I, I won't say more for fear of spoiling it. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to spoil it. But uh, parenthetically, what what is it right? Uh, what is it like to write for Marvel? Oh, I love it. I mean, it's amazing. It's a dream come true, right? Yeah. I mean, I grew up reading Marvel comics. I, I had uh, a well thumbed uh, copy of that uh, Origins of Marvel Comics trade. I don't oh, know yeah. if you remember that, but yeah. it, and um, I, I grew up at a time when uh, you know I, I when Seven Elevens had comic books, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. I would jump on my Schwinn Stingray and bike down to the 7-Eleven and uh, and I would end up it was Wawa getting, for me so oh yeah. oh there you go okay <laughs> yeah. oh, what are you Connecticut or are you uh, no, no Pennsylvania <laughs> okay there you yeah. go um, so uh, and and I would end up getting like issue you know I'd, I had issue two I had issue one and three of Micronauts but I it took me years to get issue three I, I mean issue two right you know what I mean just because yeah. you never knew how you were going to get things but um but yeah I mean I, I loved I, I love comics from from an early age and it's it, it is I, I it, it was a pretty bizarre experience mm -hmm. um you know when I first was writing these characters that I, I loved as a kid yeah so but yeah I mean, right now I'm writing um uh, the Incredible Hulk book and we've got some crazy stuff going the Hulk actually now has a son uh, Scar, son of Hulk, half the <laughs> barbarian, half alien uh, uh, kid running around on uh, planet Earth, and um, and Betty Banner, uh, who you may recall as the, as uh, Bruce Banner's long-suffering wife, um, has gotten hulked out herself. She's now Red really? She-Hulk. Yes, she's she's another She-Hulk. Yes, exactly. So we got some crazy stuff going on. We actually have a storyline coming up in the Hulk book called Mister and Mrs. Hulk, um, <laughs> which is a big crazy super spy. Keeping up with the Hulk. Exactly. Yeah, it's a it's a big super spy adventure, sort of romantic adventure, Hulk story, starting in April. Um, mm -hmm. But the big thing I'm working on, another big thing I'm working on right now, is a Silver Surfer book. Mm -hmm. um, I love the Silver Surfer. I mean, I, I, uh, I the Silver Surfer is one of those characters that should not work. Big silver guy on a surfboard, you know. Yeah, and, I, I, and, but you know what? I, I've always wondered how they. What did he live on a water world or something? <laughs> and was surfing, and Galactus went thawing. And, uh. No, he, he's kind of, the surfboard is just it's just the best way to get around space apparently. <laughs> yeah, but um, but you know it's it, it. But he's but that he's iconic and yeah. and just I, I, from a kid I was just really drawn to that sort of sense of nobility and tragedy that was part of his character. And finally, I'm getting a chance to uh, to to write a story with him as the main character, and it's a big crazy story that's starts in February. Hmm. It's a great act, and actually, um, 
people are always wondering, you know, I comics, I love comics, I love these characters, but I don't know where to get started. This is actually a great place to get started because um, it's, uh, if you've been following the surfer for years in the comics, you're gonna love this because we're gonna do crazy things with the surfer. It's the next big step for Norrin Rad, the man be underneath that silver skin. Oh, yeah. um, but, uh, but if you're totally new to comics, this is actually a good jumping on point too. Um, so, uh, so go to comicshoplocator.com and uh, put in your zip code and ask your local comic shop to hold a copy for you. Uh, Silver Surfer, number one in February. Absolutely, my, my brother's 10 years older than me and I remember he came home and said, you should read this. And a 10 year old kid looked up to my brother, you know, okay, I'll read it. And it was uh, X-Men one, I can't remember what it was, but it was the beginning of the Dark Phoenix. Oh, saga, yeah, yeah, yeah. The very beginning. And, and I was hooked. And just like you, I hop on my yeah. bike and you know, wait, <laughs> wait a month and go up there and buy the next one. And then I got, and then from there, I got into you know, other things. And I was, I, I, and then I didn't want to miss them. And I actually just bought a subscription from oh, Marvel. I get them in the little brown paper. And, nice. And I uh, got a stack of them. And I had X-Men and, of course, uh, X-Factor and Excalibur and all the X, <laughs> New Mutants and all that. And it was then Daredevil and then this and then that. And I, I probably 15 come my house. Oh there. man, you were well and, you were, uh, you were one of the chosen few. Ah, no, I, yeah, I, you I, know, I and now with all the movies coming out it's like finally, you know, you get to see some of these guys on the, on, on the big exactly, screen. Exactly. Exactly. Well, uh, sorry, go. Ahead. I was just uh, of course there are like two incarnations of, of the Hulk on the, on, on the big screen. Uh -huh. Do you know if there's going to be another Hulk say before the Avengers? Or? I, I honestly don't know. I uh, and and if I did I would pretend I didn't yeah, because yeah, I okay. couldn't say it. Okay. But, uh, no but I, I honestly don't know. I'm uh, uh, all of my inside knowledge right now is uh, has to do with the publishing on mm -hmm. the East Coast side. So uh, any, any dreams of possibly taking the, the Silver Surfer to the big screen? Oh my god yeah own? I mean I'd, I'd love to I, I would love the opportunity to do any of that. Okay. I mean I had a I had a, a, a a, a, a brush with some of that excitement when um, I, I did a storyline called Planet Hulk, okay. uh, which is a big and a big crazy story about the Hulk being exiled to an alien planet where he becomes a gladiator hmm. and then eventually a, a rebel and then of course the conquering emperor of this planet. Um, it was a total blast. I had a lot of fun on that. <laughs> but they made a uh, they made a um, uh, a movie out of it, an animated movie um, really? that came out on DVD. Yeah, huh. so I got to be a consultant on that, which was very exciting. Not that that have anything to do with Hulk having a half alien son. Yes, indeed. So oh, Hulk you're, got busy. you're very, you're, you're listening. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I was going to say. Yes, exactly. He, uh, uh, yes, he, okay, he married fine. a, uh, he married a alien warrior queen named Kyra the Old Strong, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, and so that that is, so his son is, uh, he's legitimate. See, that's very, that's very creative. It's you know, I'm always thinking here. <laughs> I always guess thinking. so. Oh, great! It's great chat <laughs> with you. It's a total pleasure. Thank and, you so much. Um,